Joe Cool's here. Joe, what kind of an evening? Enjoying yourself? It's been fantastic, Rick. I, I can't believe the number of people are here and uh, well done for the attendance and uh, just a marvellous night. But uh, Joe, uh, as we mentioned in, the, in the, um, the video, you played nearly 300 games between here and England and uh, quite a few clubs. What's uh, the comparison with the Magpies to perhaps some others? I think it's been said uh, a couple of times. Roy mentioned it, Noel Kelly's mentioned it, that uh, th there is something about playing for West that once you've played, once you're a part of that culture, that it stays with you. Uh, and honestly, that's just such a, a strong feeling that I think every player that plays with West receives and, and takes through their life. Thank you very much, John Dory, and all those great memories. That acceleration of the mark. <laughs> Only two people in the history of rugby league have ever played more test matches than Keith Holman. Yappy's here with us tonight. One of our favourite sons, Keith Holman. Yappy, how are you? Good. Oh, sorry. Good, mate. They crept up on you, down the blind side, mate. You can the blind, mate. They didn't see you. You used to work those uh, short blinds pretty well. Yeah, I'd kick your dad gets in if you came with a lot of playing. You like to put that uh, shoulder under the rib cage and uh, shorten up a few poms and a few uh, dragons, etc. I used to be pretty good. I used to enjoy it. Though. I was playing against the poms was good. The Frenchmen, they were funny. That was good, though. Now, uh, Yappy, how did you get the nickname? I don't know. I, I suppose I talked too much. <laughs> Probably back in 1948 it was given to you, wasn't it? Yeah, 48 when I was playing for West and uh, I used to be talking football all bloody day. Did it? He still does, yeah. Did anybody ever tell you to shut up besides Charlton? Neville is my mate. He looked after me as a lock forward, I've got to say that. Well, There's a lot of camaraderie, wasn't there? Great uh, teamwork and everybody get pitching in together at the Nagis. We had some wonderful games and uh, if... If never got flattened, I'd tackle the bloke that did it to him. I'd say, cop this you, so-and-so. You know, that's how it used to be in the team. And they were a nip-stick jump, you are never out. But uh, we had some good times in Western Suburbs, and it's a wonderful club to me, and I was very proud to be associated with them, you know. And, and I've still got the same friends. There's one of them over there, but he's going grey. He is a bit. Well, you should have another uh, string to your bow. You should have been called a physical trainer because this bloke over here was a bloke you, you ran a few laps at Pratton Park to get him fit for cricket. Oh, Alan Davo, he's my mate. I used to get stuck into him at Pratton Park when he was bludgeoning. Come on, you lazy big bludger, get move. Well, well Davo should get a right of reply on that. What was your uh, retort? Well, I think that was a great thing, uh, Rick. At those days, like, I, I came to West in 1952 and Jack Neal had actually tried to get me down there in about 1947, I think it was. I was still at high school, playing rugby league. He said, why don't you come down here and train and get fit for cricket? Who was I to know that Neville Charlton was in front of me and this bloke was behind me? And uh, between the two of them, they made a mess of me every week. But the main thing was, I, I, I think I was the fittest cricketer that ever walked onto a cricket field. And, uh, and, and what uh, Keith said was true, you know, like, I had 10 or 12 years there, and all I can say is they were the happiest days of my life. Uh, Training with those folks, Kelly Shea, Noel Kelly, all those folks over all those years, Peter Diamond, Harry Wells, well, I, Harry, Harry and myself used to go down together and come back home again. We still have to feed his birds afterwards, but, but, it, was, uh, but it was just uh, just a fabulous camaraderie between the two sports, really. Cricket and football at Pratton Parks, it was, it was Western Suburbs. That was, that was what I spoke about last week, and it was all about the spirit of Western Suburbs. Well, uh, dare I say, uh, with, with the folklore of Wes, uh, you probably did more training than Dealer ever did. Oh, no, he, uh, he had to because uh, we had both like Vic Hay as coach and some of those fellas, and I'll tell you what, old, old Vic, I'll, I'll give old Vic his view. The first time he ever came there as coach and I started to train with him, he was about 57 or 58, and that was when I started to really make my mark in cricket. He said, son, he said, you've got to have a massage every morning before you start the game and have a massage at the end of the day. And I, I honestly believe that my career was actually made from that day on because I was the most relaxed person that ever went onto a field. And I was also, it, it really it did make a hell of a difference to my body after every day's play to get a massage. And of course, everyone laughed about it. I had my own massage table and everything else. But that really Vic Hay, I give Vic a lot of credit for, for that because it, it did help me relax a lot in games. I, I used to get keyed up and everything. 
But uh, no, they were great days, fabulous days. Well, Alan uh, had, uh, it was uh, a tribute night for Alan at the start of uh, West Cricket's uh, season last Friday in this room. And Alan said some marvellous things about Western suburbs in those days, and we appreciate that, Alan. Thank you. Alan Davidson, Keith Holman, Mike, uh, there's one gent we haven't actually caught up with. We might just have a quick word with Les Boyd. Boyd, he's got 50 bucks, 100 bucks. What's doing? I'm just going to buy one of the photos for my wife. Good on you, mate. Well, uh, you came up uh, as, what, 17-year-old from Cootamundra to the Magpies. A phone call from Roy on a Thursday night, wasn't it? Yeah, I flew up on a Thursday and um, trained on the Thursday night with the boys and uh, ended up playing on the Saturday in the first competition game against East in 1976, Rick. I remember that game vividly. 74-75, the Roosters won the comp. First round at Lidcombe. And uh, we were saying on the hill, well, who is this kid? And, uh, of course, uh, Johnny Elford was in the second row and... Uh, uh, Peter Young, who's here tonight, was in the front row with Dallas. Great uh, pack of forwards, which he blended in with uh, straight off the bat. Spear tackles the whole shooting match, so we were pretty happy with him. But um, th those years with Wes, uh, we said in the video, 67 drama charge matches, but a lot of quality football as well. And 78, I know, uh, the Kangaroos. Uh, must have been a, a great uh, thrill for you to be picked on that. I think to get picked on the Kangaroo too, for anyone, is a great thrill. You know, I think... Um that was my first game for Australia, being picked on the Kangaroo Tour, so um, I was excited and um, went away and come back. It was a great Kangaroo Tour. We, we won the Ashes, so I was ex extremely pleased with that, yeah. Well, mate, good to see you here. Thanks very much, Les Boyd. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, Les Boyd. Mike, well, if I could just have one quick word with Gary Lester as well. Gary's here. Gary uh, wrote the fabulous book of ours, Clouds of Dust, Buckets of Blood. And uh, we'd like to uh, congratulate him firstly on that. And perhaps, uh, Gary, there might be another chapter or two somewhere down the line. I would certainly hope so, Rick. I guess we um, finished the book a little bit earlier than uh, the end of, certainly it's not the end of Wes. And from looking around at the gathering here, you just understand how, how, uh, how far into the future this, this club will continue. And I was just thinking earlier just how important It'd be nice for people in rugby league to know that if functions like this are happening tonight, to, to understand the, the um, just to understand the feeling that West have and the spirit of the game, and and that the game is, uh, as we know, is far from dead, but but there's a real history to it. And I think one of the good things about this is to understand that it really does have a history and a great history of West. Well, thank you for documenting that so faithfully. And a fantastic, uh, those are the best Gary Lester, ladies and gentlemen.